Okay, I suppose you're wondering why you're looking at a level meter here. Well, the reason behind that is I need something to monitor the levels when I'm doing my videos on my computer, particularly when I'm doing my cartoons. And sometimes one clip may be louder than the other, so... Need some way of making sure the volume levels are all the same. So that's why I've made this little meter here. Before I had to connect it up to something else with a meter on it. Which is not always the most practical way of doing things. Which is why I've done this. I've made a little circuit so it can monitor an audio signal. This is the circuitry right here. And although this circuit needs to be powered, there are no active components on there whatsoever. It's all done with passives. Here's old Franken PC. And you might be able to see, if I zoom in of course. There's the meter right there. I've got it connected to the output, which is right there. And there's the meter. I'm powering off the 12 volt rail, which is the yellow wire. As you can probably see, Now, I'll just move the keyboard out of the way so you can see the meter better. I don't know exactly if you can see the actual needle. Because the LCD on this camera's gone. Well, backlight is not working. Okay, yeah, that's good enough. So I'll play some music through it. And as you can see, the meter is responding to the music. If I disconnect the power to it... As you can see, it does not do its thing the way it should do. So, plug the power back in. And there we go. So, adjust the volume. So you can <clears throat> so you can see that's working pretty good. I'm sure I won't get into any copyright issues with the music there. Sure anybody who uses music trackers will recognize that track. Okay, so if you were to design a level meter, I'm sure you'd come up with something like this. Here's where the audio comes in. Got a full bridge diode rectifier there and the meter yeah, an audio signal is AC, so it gets rectified and puts into the meter. No problem, right? Problem with a diode is, it doesn't conduct until it has a certain amount of voltage going through it. With most silicon diodes, it's about 0.7 volts that it needs before it will start to conduct electricity. And also that means that you get less voltage coming out of here than you put in here. So, let's say we put in 1 volt there, we'd only get about... 0.3 volts there. And because in a circuit like this it's going through two diodes, that's going to need about 1.4 volts before the meter starts doing anything. So maybe on the really loudest peaks it'll, it might respond. So really this circuit's useless. It's not going to work any way you want it to. So this is what I came up with. First of all, you can see that there is only one diode between the audio and the meter because we only need the top half of the audio. Trouble is, of course, the diode's still going to have that 0.7 or whatever voltage drop, so we need to do something about that. And that's where the rest of the circuit comes in. So, what we've got here is a 1K resistor here, a couple of diodes here, and what that is, is a voltage divider. So we have about 1.4 volts right there. And I can fine tune that voltage with this variable resistor here. And that goes into this diode here through this other diode. So we have just enough voltage so the diode just starts to conduct. And with that, it can conduct the full top half of the AC waveform without any trouble and we get a much better reading on the meter. We get what it is actually is. And finally, a couple of capacitors. 
got a 10 microfarad capacitor here, that's very important because we don't want any of that voltage going back into the audio source. And this capacitor here just dampens the meter a bit. Anyway, next thing to do regarding this old relic is to make a front panel. I'm thinking of mounting the meter about there, above the CD drive. Putting the front panel on it's going to make these speakers sound way better. I don't even know if that's in the shot. Oh yeah, it is in the shot. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to make the front panel out of cardboard because I don't have any wood that I could use and besides my jigsaw doesn't work anymore. But anyway, that's what I'm going to get on with right now. Okay, looks a bit messy, but there is progress being made. I've already got one of the speakers up and the rest is all in place. Got the line inputs and outputs there, video inputs and outputs there. Unfortunately, I made a little bit of a mistake and cut the hole for it too big. And this is what it looks like on the other side. So, let's turn on old Frank and PC and see how things, see how good things work. Actually, I'll just leave it like that for the moment. Just find that power button. Okay, it rolls into life. Okay, I'll be back when this thing's booted up. Well, here we are. Almost all together. If anyone wonder why there's a great big gaping hole here, well, that's for the CD-ROM. Anyway, I'll load up some thing and uh, let's see what happens. Let's get a video. Huh, I've got no videos in my video folder, that's weird. Okay, let's go to raw video. Oh, I've got some interesting looking stuff on here. What have we got right here? Well guys, do you want to hear the good news first or the bad news? Well, it certainly seems to be working. Good news? I'm only 10 years old, I, I won't be able to take bad news very good. Well, the good news is, I think we found a place to move. And what's the bad news? Just moving the camera off the tripod. Is, I'm going to be moving so far away, I'm never going to be able to see any of you again. I'm sure even if you're living on the other side of the planet, we can still come... So, and... we have a video playing. I'm covering up the camera's microphone. On this planet anymore. What? What? There's our connections. What? And the VU meter. What? I said the VU meter. Yeah, this paper came through the mail and, well, I just went upstairs and printed it out really big on my... I think that's working pretty good. So... What's it say? It says I've been selected. Anyway, you've all seen this. Well, here we are. That's now stuck on. Just remove the shelf. I think it looks pretty good. Not a professional job, but still. And I know there's some people who will criticise me because I use cardboard instead of wood or anything like that. But I don't care. Anyway, we've got our inputs, audio inputs and outputs, video inputs and outputs, that still needs to be sorted, but... Two speakers, DVD drive, USB and headphones, power switch, and this little hole here is where the volume control is. It's lined up with where the volume control on the amplifier is. Just need to put a knob on there. Unfortunately, I'm not too impressed with how these speakers sound. They're a little bit boomy and uh, not much in the way of treble. Okay, I've got a MIDI on XM play here. Using the Corium sound font. Pretty good for MIDI's and uh, for I mean 
Sounds pretty good for midis that are classical and jazz midis, but apart from that, it's midi sounds about the same. I don't know how clearly that's coming through on the video. It does sound a bit boomy and uh, trebleless, so I might add some tweeters in the near future. But for now, I think that's pretty good. I need to just put the shelf back on, and we'll be done. And this is the shelf. It just goes on. Well, that's looking better. I hope I'm not in the way. There we go, that's the, oh, you couldn't really see what I was doing with the shelf, I didn't realise the camera wasn't at a good angle. But there we go, that's, um, I guess that's it for now. So I'll see you all next time, goodbye.